Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and it is Triple Play Day and we have a great project for you today and I am here with Natalie and Misty and our projects are based on the Clearly Perfect Slotted Trimmer and this is a tool that we use a lot and we know a lot of you have gotten it and if a tool can do one thing like trim, mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. But this tool can do a lot of things and we want to show you those things. So girls, let's show them what they're going to learn today. These are our three different projects, and we are gonna start with you, Misty. All right, let's do it. All right. All right, so this is my quilt. I called it Half Square Triangle Blooms. It's beautiful. And it uses the I Clearly Perfect. I, Thank you, I, I love, love this it border. Too. It's I, so great. I really enjoyed it. So when you buy the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmers, it comes with two sizes mm -hmm. in there for whole measurements and half measurements. And on the back, it gives you some great tips and tricks of what you can do. And so I am going to start with just the basic half square triangle and we're going to make two different sizes of that to make this quilt. That's awesome. So you will need that for sure. You're also going to need one package of 10 inch squares. I use Woodland and Wildflowers by Fancy That Design House for Moda and it's a beautiful line. It's gorgeous. I also used a panel which I don't do very often but I just mm -hmm. loved this one. I love this panel. It's very yeah. cool. So um, you'll trim that to 35 inches but you'll need that. Then you're going to need some background fabric, approximately two and a half yards. That includes your um, uh, borders, your inner and out, two inner borders <laughs> is what I'm trying to say, both of those. And then you'll need your outer border, which is a yard and a quarter. That's a six inch border. And for your backing, you'll need four and a half yards. So let's go ahead and set all of this aside for now and we can get started. For my project, you are going to be using trimmer A, which is the half inch measurements. Mm -hmm. And so you can set B for aside both blocks. for both blocks. Awesome. Yep. So you can set B aside for now. And then I'm gonna pull just a couple of prints out of here. And for my big half square triangles, I used kind of my darker shades. And for the little, oh, yeah. I used the mediums and lights. So oh, nice. you can do whatever you want, but that's just how I, made sense of it in my mind. So I'll just grab a couple. There we go, I love this green, that's so pretty. The and whole so line is really it beautiful. It really is. And so we're gonna match this up with a 10 inch background square and I've gone ahead and cut that already and I drew a line corner to corner in both directions and we are using the easy eight method mm -hmm. and so we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam on both sides. Alrighty, very cool. So if you will do that. I'm happy to. All right, let's see here. Safely made it down two sides. That's perfect, yeah. And you don't have to be too exact on this because no, we are going to square we're them up, square right? Square at the end, absolutely. I'm just noticing my square is off a little bit, but that shouldn't really matter. It should be just fine. Yep. Perfect. So we will take our 5 by 15 ruler and I'm going to cut this in half both directions now. Just like so. I love the easy eight. I do too. And it is always a good idea to cut on the unlined part first. Yeah, because, because then now uh, we can just cut right. in between. Exactly. And so we'll just cut these and then we can come back and you square them. You want Natalie them. to start ironing? Well, we're going to square. We have to square. Are so. we squaring with the Clearly Perfect? Of course. Then we don't iron. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so we are going to tr square these. Oops, I picked up the wrong one. We need a four and a half is what we're looking for. And so we are just going to line our stitch line up with the dashed line on the trimmer, just like so. And you'll see I don't have to trim very much at all but we're just gonna shave a little bit off. 
of both sides. And I do like to use these little notches to get rid of that extra fabric. I do too. There I do go. too, but I forget. You I forget, forget about there. it. Oops, yeah. I missed this little bit. I'm just going to trim that off. There we go. All right. And now you can press. People are always asking me, what are those little, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I forget. I forget about them. They are super helpful though. So we will just square one more and you'll do this to all of yours. If I can get in that notch, there we go. There we go. And so we only need two for each of our blocks. So we'll just get that far. You're gonna go ahead and square up all of yours that you make that way. All right. And so, so then set, these aside. set those aside for now. And then we can move on to our smaller half square triangles. Now for that, I'm actually gonna square this down to six inches. So we're just gonna trim our square just like so. And you're gonna have some extra that you can just put in your stash for a different project. There we go. I'll just set those aside and I should have the exact same concept here, but just a smaller square. Oh, nice. And so we are just going to sew again with the easy eight and I should have some done to save us a few steps. But you're just going to repeat the exact same thing and we'll cut that in half both directions just like we did. It's just smaller. And so now we can square these to two and a half. So I have some of these ready to go. Oh, you already have one going? You don't even need mine? Yeah, but you can keep, you can keep going. <laughs> I'm just go. trying to move it along. There we go. It is just kind of fun to sew these. It is. I love the easy eight. So there's one little two and a half inch square. So tiny. Yep. And I'll trim up one more. You're just lining up that stitch line with the stitch line on the ruler. Now, do you have a lot of extra room on this with the six inch square? Do you have the extra room? Not a lot. Not a, Not lot, a lot, but I mean, still just a bit to shave. Oh, okay. So, but it, so you it, need to kind of be careful with your quarter of an inch. Yeah, just watch it. But you should be you should be fine. Um, it's still enough to trim down. I didn't have any trouble at all. Perfect. And so now that we have those, very nice. We are going to make a couple of these little four patch units. And so if you could sew that together just I'm like happy that, to. I'll put these right sides together. Okay. There we go. And we are going to do two like that. Oh, did it get I might turned? Have, I don't know. I might have moved this. I want to make sure they're right. I'm going to it, take it out and open it up. It's always better to check. Yep. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Yep. Oh. oh, yep. So this goes like that. Okay. Yep. It's a good thing Very we checked. Good. You know, you'll get that gut feeling. Yeah. And when you get that gut feeling, it's always Absolutely. a good idea to stop and just make sure what you're doing is right. It's much easier to fix it then. And I kind of veered in a little bit right there, but let's see if it matters. I bet it'll be fine. Do I have one more of those? Oh, I do. So we can just make one. And you want to make sure that you use two different fabrics on this? Yeah, I just made the whole thing scrappy. scrappy. Okay. Yep. I love that. Very nice. So then, All right, Nat, here. you want to iron this? Yeah, sure. You could give that one a press. That would be. And so now this is really fun because the magic of this is that we're actually making four different blocks that are made up with our big half square triangles and these little units. They all are made up of two of these and two of these. But let's just talk about the panel and how we got it all to fit together a little bit more. So I trimmed this panel down to 35 inches. Square. Square, mm -hmm. exactly, both directions. And then this first little inner border is three and a quarter inches wide. And that was the math that we needed to have it match up with our blocks. And so that's what you're gonna wanna do, whatever panel you choose. Um, and so then now let's talk about the four different blocks. So the first one is our corner block, which is this one here. 
And so you'll see we arrange that with this little unit and this little unit and our two half square triangles in. So that's the first block and that okay. fits in the four corners. So you just make four of that one. You make four of that. Oh my gosh, that's so clever. <laughs> and so then the next block, we have both a right and a left facing. And so you can see these just alternate. We'll do this one first. And we're just spinning so that they all match. It's the exact same units. So then we'll sew these together in a four patch just like the others and you'll get this block here. And this is the right orientation. So on all your right sides, you're gonna have this block. Oh, and I see it changes right here in the middle. Well, yeah, so we actually have a middle block. Also. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, okay. Yes, and so then, great. so then we can move to that one since you pointed that out. And so then this will spin and this will spin. And this is our center. Oh, that's so block, cool. Just like that. You're such a clever girl. That fits right there. That's awesome. awesome. And then the you last, need four of those. You, you'll need four of those. And then the last one, of course, is the left orientation. And so this just rotates just like that. That's so great. And here's our last block that fits on this side. Oh, okay. that's perfect. So it's just as simple as that. And so then once you get your blocks added around, you're going to do another three and a quarter inch border that'll go all the way around and I finished it off with a six inch and then I use the dense leaves quilting pattern mm -hmm. and this is the back. Oh the back is really That's cute with the little feathers. little feathers and I think it measures 72 ish square so. Yep. That's awesome. Thank I you. Like that. That's very cool. I think this would look fun in lots of different fabrics. I do too. Fabrics. Yeah and lots and of even different if panels. You had, yeah. Well, if your panel can be measured to 35 square, that would be awesome. But yeah. even if you had just yardage that you like, that's true. A 35 inch square would be great in the middle. And I do have a bonus actually, because oh, I fun. thought it would be fun to show these blocks without the panel. And so uh -huh. this is just with a plain center square in the middle. And then it makes this great little burst. Oh, that's, that's so great. great. Isn't that fun? Yeah, so, I love that. That'd be a great baby quilt I'm, or wall yeah, hanging. I love it really too. fun. And you, this part, even if it was a baby quilt, could right, be used could like for the baby's name yes. or information yeah. on it, or That's put a, a little great applique. idea. Yeah, really cute. Or leave it empty so you can put your centerpiece on it. That's, That's right. true. <laughs> it was a table. That's Either way, perfect. awesome. All right, so, so many who's fun up ideas. Next? I think Natalie's up next. All, All right, right, let's we'll do it. build on this half square triangle. All righty. All right, so my quilt I called Happy Hourglass because it's just. A bunch of hourglass blocks and, and they're separated happy. by some sashing so they look like they move around quite a bit. Yeah. I love and the movement. I, think I love this line. It's, just, it's, it's really pr really pretty line. This is our friend too. Bab's line, isn't it? Yes. yes. So I took the half square triangle and it's one of these ones on the back and I combined it with another half square triangle going the opposite direction to create the hourglass block or the quarter square triangle, whichever you want to call it. Um, we're going to use the clearly perfect slotted trimmer B. Say that fast three times. Sometimes that's a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> isn't it? It can Clearly be. perfect slotted trimmer. There we go. B, which is the whole sizes. Okay. And that was just what came out most conveniently with the size that I used, right? Sure. For the perfect. Fabric. Yeah. Okay. So to make this quilt, you'll need one packet of 10 inch squares. And I uh, used Afternoon Tea by Beverly McCullough for Riley Blake Designs. It's adorable. You'll need an additional package of background fabric plus two and a quarter yards, and that includes all of the sashing that goes in between the blocks and the inner border. So sashing here, inner border here, there's just quite a bit of background in this quilt, mm -hmm. which is fine. It makes a really great quilt with um, minimal effort. Right. It's 89 by 91, which I think is almost queen size, probably. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's great. It's I mean, perfect. And you can make yours bigger or smaller, obviously, by using more or less blocks. Yes. <laughs> or bigger borders or whatever. There we go. I got off track. <laughs> All right, so to make your, uh, for your outer border, you'll need a yard and a half, and that's just five inches. And then the backing is this beautiful. Um, I love it's that. It's kind of like All the tees. tees and, you know, it's really pretty. So here, let me give you a look at that. And I, and I did piece this backing, <laughs> which I think is fun. Oh, I love the tee on the backing. That's really cute. Yeah, so I used mainly this blue tee fabric, and then I pieced in a little bit in the middle because I thought it looked really fun. You'll that. need a total of eight and a quarter yards, and um, cut into three strips is great, and pieced together. And I do so, love uh, that you put your piece in the middle. Yes. You know, if you want to piece it back, 
you right. want to put it in the Putting, middle. Putting um, um, your pieces in the middle makes it easier for your machine quilter to line it up when they're rolling the quilt on. And you need eight and a quarter yards because of where it falls on the 90, but you won't use a right. lot of that bottom piece. You need three passes, but if you use a 108, it's just right. two and three quarter yards. Mm, that's right. That's it. I'm just trying to help you. That's exactly <laughs> Thank you. All right, show us how to do it. All right, so to start with, we're going to make half square triangles, and I use the make four. Okay. Um, so we're going to take one of these pieces and one of our background pieces, and we're going to sew all the way around the outside edge. Okay. So just line them up right sides together and stitch all the way around the outside edge. And then we'll cut that into fourths. There's really so many different ways to make half square triangles and it, it for me, it matters how many of them I need yes. and what sizes I want them That's to end too. up. So, people um, will always say, why don't you use the same method? I'm like, because I'm looking for a size. Right, yeah. it, depends, it depends what you're going for. Yeah. So for this one, I needed to start out with some larger triangles mm -hmm. because um, when you combine them, they get a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, every time and you cut and take smaller. another seam, then they get smaller and smaller. Right. And with this fabric being so beautiful, I kind of wanted them to be large. Also, it goes together quicker. It does, it does. So. No, it's always interesting to me that I somebody can take this one since okay. this was a little wider. Though. Well, it's no big deal. All so right. we're not going to square anything yet. What we're going to do is cut this both directions diagonally to get our um, half square triangles. We can press these open. Okay. And we're going to mix and match. Um, well, in a minute, we'll mix and match. Not quite yet. Sorry, I got a bit ahead of myself. <laughs> okay, so once these are pressed, what we're going to do is make our hourglass block. And this is pretty simple. What we're going to do is place these right sides together on opposite sides. So the print goes to the white and the, the white to the print. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And yeah. if you've pressed to your dark side, your seams will naturally lock. They'll be in, going in opposite directions, and so they'll lock in place. Then what we're going to do is we are going to grab a pencil and draw a line opposite the seam. So, yeah. um, was that perpendicular? Yeah, perpendicular. <laughs> that word, perpendicular. Yes. So we're going to go opposite the seam and just draw a line right down the middle. Then you're going to sew on both sides of this line. Okay. And you just kind of want to feel and make sure that these are, are pressed tightly up against each other. Nesting but, there in the middle. Um, yeah, it shouldn't take too, too much effort because those seams just sort of naturally lock in place because we've pressed to the dark side. So the cool thing about this is you don't square it the first time. No. You only square the block one time. You don't have time. to square yet. We're not there that. yet. And yeah, because these are such large pieces, it comes together so quick. Yeah. So out of each set that you do, you actually get two, two little hourglasses. Blocks. Yes. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna cut this apart right down the middle, and it doesn't necessarily have to be on that drawn line. You just have to make sure that you have two secure pieces, and they will be um, looking just like this with this line down the middle. So this is where the Clearly Perfect Trimmer Tool comes in super handy because it has a straight line that goes from the peak to the center. So now you're gonna be looking at the dashed line with your bottom seam, and then this straight line goes right on the vertical seam. Perfect. So Which you keeps line that it right up. in the middle. And people have and struggled with are, this kind of squaring for years. Yes. So these are six inch squares. So you just have a little bit to trim off. And I do use this bottom edge um, to cut those little dog ears because it makes everything stitch together smooth. Just, just like that, and you'll see when you open it up, you have a perfect hourglass perfect. Block, which that is so is great. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Having that seam line means that your middle is going to be centered, and all of your points are going to line right up in the corners like they're supposed to. So again, the little dashed stitch line goes on your sewn stitch line, and the straight line here goes straight up on on the seam line. 
So we're always matching up our seams. And if they're a little off, just, just so you know, I do sometimes have them where they're, they don't line up like exactly you're very perfect. Just a hair. Yes. We're human. Just center it. Yeah. That's and it the will most be important. fine. Yep. Just center it up and it'll be just fine. Do the best you can. All right. I'm going to trim this one. Trim in the dog ear and the other end. And it doesn't really matter which order you go. We've got one more. So cute. Cute. Isn't that fun? Really fun. Okay, so now all we do is we mix and match. All right, so we've got these. We're going to put them together with the print touching the white. And you would just want to make sure that all your blocks are consistently the same. I did mine scrappy. Uh, you can combine your colors however you like. But as long as every block is put together in the same orientation, then it's going to come out great. You just have to and be I, consistent. And I'm noticing that it kind of makes this pinwheel, the pinwheel in the does. middle. It does. It does make a pinwheel. So it's always print, background, print, background, print, background. Cute. So just, just like, like that. that. And you just, you know, fold them up and sew a little four patch. And then all it is is sashing. And so I start with a block and sashing, block sashing, etc., And then end with a sashing here. And these, these rows are all the same, but this row is flipped. Okay. So you make, you make them all identical, but then this one gets flipped. Every other row you so just flip So it's an A over. and B, um, and then it sort of an A and B diagram, but really the row is the same. Yeah, you're just flipping it It starts over. with a block, ends with a sashing. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. And then you have your long um, horizontal sashing in between, but you have no blocks, no points to match up because these are offset. So the inner border is two and a half inches. The outer border is five inches and it just makes a really great quilt. I love it. It's and I, beautiful. I hope you guys I love, love it as much as I do. And uh, mom, you're next. All righty then. <laughs> so now I get to show you my quilt and I called it Clearly Perfect Pinwheels because it's made with the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmer and it's a three piece triangle square. So it's really fun to show you how to make. So let's look at the quilt. It's so pretty. All right, so here's my triangles. And um, I actually added this giant diamond block in here because when you're dealing with half square triangles, you can do so many designs. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, to make this quilt, you're gonna need one packet of 10 inch squares. And I used Quiet Grace by Kim Deal. And I love her fabric because it's a little bit rustic, but it's so rich. Mm -hmm. it's very A lot vibrant. of beautiful colors in it. You're gonna need uh, three and a half yards of uh, background fabric, and that includes your sashing. And I, these are little one and a half inch sashing pieces that I did in here. Mm -hmm. Then also you're going to need, um, your outer border is one and a half yards, and it's a nice big six inch border. And your backing here is five yards, and I just use this beautiful. It's oh, that's so it's pretty. It's like caramels. Mm -hmm. It's so yeah. pretty, yeah. Love it. My quilting pattern is dense sleeves, and the quilt comes out to be 72 by 81, so it's a great size quilt. So let me show you how to do this. All right, so I used a little bit different method in making mine, and what I did was I took two 10-inch squares like this, and I sewed them right down the sides. So two squares, right sides together. Make sure you have a little contrast. You know, you don't want to put two colors to like. So I like that you can see the two kind different of a colors. Light dark yeah. or a warm cool. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to sew on the sides. Okay. All right. So this is a little trick and it's just kind of fun uh, how I did this. So you want to sew a quarter of an inch just on the sides. All right. Now what you want to do when you start is you want to choose 36 of these squares. I only use 36. Okay. So you'll have a few left over for another project. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay my ruler right on the edge. And I love this ruler because the block is 10, the ruler's 5. You don't even have to worry about where it's going to end up. You just put it on the edge and cut right down the middle. And then do it the other way as well. So then you will have four blocks that are all uh, have one seam on one side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to press these to the dark side. Okay. And then we're going to sew them together and make a long strip. There's those two. Okay, so Natalie, I'll just have we, you. We, so we turn them so that they're 
light dark still like yes a, make yeah. a pattern yep you make pattern you're going to do light dark light dark light dark okay just different fabrics they'll go right along here and you're going to need your clearly perfect slotted trimmer b for this one and i because we're going to be cutting these at six inches awesome okay now the next thing you're going to need, these should these are five inches, that's how they end up, and you're going to need a strip of background that is also five inches, because we're going to make a tube out of this. This is our tube quilting. There's okay. one more. Do one more. All right. And Misty, if you want to press that little seam out right there. Sure. Alrighty. Let me have it. There we go. <laughs> All right. So we're then you, we're just going to press these. Now I, I know you girls are going to die over this, but I actually opened my seams on this. What? what? Wow. I know you're so shocked. Do you want now me you to don't have to, um, but for some reason, I just did, and all of mine are like that. Look at this. This wow. is so unlike you. I know it, right? Yes. Do now, I it works need to either do way. that? No, you don't. Okay. You don't actually have to do that. All right. All awesome. right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these pieces. Now, these are the four pieces out of one layer cake square. Okay. And we are going to put them with a background, and we want to cut off this selvage so that we can start it right at the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim this off. So we're going to sew a quarter inch down this side and a quarter inch down this side. So we're making a tube, and we'll just line these up. Okay. And you can put as many of these, you know, half square or, you know, layer cakes together as you want. Like maybe you want to cut a whole bunch of these and make a really long chain. Right, and just sit and sew. Yeah, it's okay either way, yeah. We're going to sew. We're just going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down one side, and then she's going to flip it, and we're going to do it all the way up the other side. Keep them lined up. She loves when I tell her how to sew over her shoulder. <laughs> And it won't go actually all the way to the end of this strip, you know, so. There we go. And then you'll just turn that around and sew down the other side. Now it's all sewn together. There we go. All right, so you're going to look at it on this side, and you can see that you know some of our seams are going one way and some are going the other, and we want a straight line on these. So this is just a little trick that I do. I just come up here to the seam, and I just give it a little clip, and then that seam will lay right down. And so, like, this one is perfect, but this one needs a little clip. And so don't stress over that, you know, because you can make it work, and you can do like I did, and I iron them open. open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to get our trimmer B, and what we're going to do is we're going to lay this, so like Natalie's, it goes right on this seam line, straight up the middle, and then this one comes right along this seam line here. And you'll have a little bit extra room up here on the top, but that's going to be just perfect for what we need. So we're going to cut here. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to trim off my little uh, dog ear over there. We're going to come down here and trim off this little one as well. And then nice. what you get is this beautiful little... How cute! Uh, double colored triangle. What did they call it? I always call them piece, four squares. Three piece square. Three tri piece square. Triangle yeah. square. I think that's it. Three piece <laughs> triangle <laughs> square. <laughs> All right. So then you flip your piece over because you still want to keep this side up, and we're going to cut the next one. So we want to lay this seam down, and we're going to line again our our little uh, line on their seam line, and this one goes straight up the middle. So it's going to be six inch cut. You're going to line it up on the six inch line. So we have the middle and the six inch sewing line, just like that. And the thing that's cool about this is there really is very little waste, you know? And so again, we're just right. going to flip it and we're going to come back to this line right here. But that center line is the one you're always looking you're at, always right? Always that's looking that's at the, the center line. One. Yes. And then, of course, right across this bottom edge right here, we want to make sure 
that were in enough, that were lined up our seam line on their seam line, and that mm -hmm. this middle one is still right up and down on that seam line. Excellent. All right, so then I'm going to just trim another one. And you will need four of these for your little uh, projects, your little pinwheels. My pinwheels are all the same color. Okay, so now I'm just gonna come in and clip this seam right here so it lays flat. And you see then it will go where you don't cut into the stitches at all, you just cut that little seam line. We'll do the same thing here. And then they just lay nice and flat. Because as you're sewing along, you know, if you flip your piece, you will have some of your seams wanting to go this way and some wanting to go that way. And so that's just an easy fix on tricky. that. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one on the stitch line again. I look at my stitch line first and then I make sure it's lined up in the middle. And again, all the, this is really all the waste there is, that little tiny piece right there. It's so fun. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So we have four of these now. So you're just going to go ahead and keep cutting your strip. You're going to get seven out of that. And you're going to want four of them for your pinwheel. So we're going to take these over here. And all your pinwheels need to go the same direction. So once you get one pinwheel done, leave it right there for a pattern so you can make sure it goes the same direction. My pinwheels start with the color pointing down in the top uh, left-hand side. So we're going to start it this way. This will determine what color your pinwheel is in the center. So then we'll just add this one. And it's the yellow ones on this block that are going to make the pinwheel. And so I do the same mantra, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, all seems to the center. And this makes your pinwheel right here. Very and so cool. I have several of those blocks done. And let's look at how they go into the block. So I did two right here. Here's one. Here's the next one. I did two together. And that formed my pinwheel block. I sashed it on one side with an inch and a half and across the bottom. So then with your extra ones, you know, you're going to have three extras and you want to scrap those up to make this block in here. This is just a big diamond block. And what you're going to do is you're going to lay your pieces. I'll get some more of my extras over here so that you can see how this all comes together. This is such a versatile block that you can do all kinds of things with it. Anything you can do with a half square triangle, you can do with this block here that has the two fabric colors in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix them up because these are our leftovers. And we're going to put them together so they form a peak like this. And then the bottom ones are going to come together with a, uh, right here, we're going to make the same block, but it'll be upside down. So this, this is going to come out here to this side right here. This is the block. Let me get a different colored one right here. And you're going to make this block twice to make this long diamond right here. Nice. And so the long diamond, you know, this is the same blocks as our one pinwheel. So we need two to match it up. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I... I'm just going to have, have some matchy That's ones okay. right here. That's all right. So here's this right here. And then this. So this is actually would be called a chevron block. Right. Mm -hmm. And then this one here. Adorable. Like this. Very cool. So it makes the long uh, chevron block and the two pinwheels as well. So you're going to need to make seven of these blocks right here in the middle. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then your pinwheel blocks, you're going to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. And it just makes this darling little quilt. So on the side of each block, you're going to put an inch and a half sashing. Now I tried putting these together without sashing to see what would happen, but it just got a little confusing. So we like the inch and a half sashing next to each block. And then we put our inch and a half sashing between the rows. And then we went ahead and put an inch and a half all the way around it to go ahead and make that, you know, match it up to this nice border. So nothing bled into the border. And I just think it came together so it's really cute. cute. So yep, our two blocks it. again, we've got our pinwheels right here. And we've got our big diamond block. So many things you can do with this. It's just really fun. Very cool. So we hope you enjoyed this triple, triple play. play. On the Clearly Perfect Slotted Trimmer, we hope you try it. Make sure if you do that you hashtag it MSQC Show and Tell. And we hope you enjoy this tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, 
Be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.